Good morning, everyone. If you could pass these around. Thank you so much. All right, Boketov. I want to I wanna just again thank everyone for coming. I'm sorry? Sure, yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone, again, for coming. Yeshakoach for coming. Yeshakoach for getting up, choosing life, choosing light. Should be a week of new, new strength that we never knew existed. And a lot, a lot of love. <laughs> Just a lot of love this week. A lot of more and more and more love. You know, someone that we learn from that I feel like loves us, Pashut loves us, is the Nitivot Shalom. And I saw, we saw it last week on Sunday. And um, I want to do another piece today that is from that same booklet of, of letters, or igrot, that the Slonim Rebbe had written over the years, that were put, was put together, to really give us mamash, bitachon, and strength, and the love for the schut that we have to be here in Eretz Yisrael. We're not going anywhere. We're here. I was so, um, I was so inspired over Shabbos. We had two seminary girls that... Uh, stayed by us for Shabbos. And um, they were telling us, like we all know that many, many, you know, many for whatever the reasons are, are not here anymore. Many of the, of the students have gone back, but it's just seeing like these two girls that there was no, there was mamash no question. It was so beautiful. It was so, such pride. It really inspired us, my wife and I and our children. It gave us a lot of koach. May it continue to grow more and more and more. So, what's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Welcome, Nachon. You guys made it here, Mamash. Now, this it. I don't have the words. I don't. I don't. I, none of us have the words to express like what the armor. You know, the armor that 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 the, the strength. Ashrechem, Mamash, more than more than ever. Ashrechem, big time. So I want us to, to really remember what Eretz Yisrael's hashgacha is all about. The hashgacha that takes place in Eretz Yisrael. And how it's different than any other place in the world. And I'm sure that a lot of things here is stuff that we know already. But it's very, very important to remember and remind ourselves like where, we're are, where, where we are. Are there any extra pages? I want to remind ourselves where, where we are and the hashgacha that, is, that takes place here in Eretz HaKodesh, in Eretz Yisrael. These words were said by the Netivot Shalom, by the Slonim Rebbe, like you see on top, in November, probably November of 1986. Tavshin Memhei Cheshvan is, uh, I'm sorry, 1984. November 1984. I'm not sure exactly what he's referring to when he starts to speak about what's going on, um, but you don't need to know exactly what was going on then because it's what's going on right now over here. Yes. Yeah. We'll see what he. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how the slanimer says. Now the Hebrew, as you know, with the netivot shalom, the slanimer is a medu. It's very. Uh, it's not so. It's not so difficult, and we're going to do this. It's today, and we're going to continue this on Thursday because this is just the first part of it, and it's it's just so beautiful. I found it to be so eye-opening, heart-opening. I think there's there's a lot here that we can uh, we can get to. Anachnu po beeretz hakodesh shruim aidna bematzav mesubach hagolem lano liot kemebul balim. We here in Eretz Yisrael are in a situation that seems to be very complicated which may cause us to be confused. And this situation is, is you know, maybe it is inflation. It's, it's, it's affecting everyone materialistically and spiritually as well. Thank you so much. We don't know in what world we're living in. And we don't know what today will bring. Sounds familiar? Mm-hmm. 
So what do we do when we're in a situation where we have no idea what today will bring? We don't know what's, we don't know what the world, you know, definitely we don't. It's amazing. We have no idea what the world is going to look like today, right? We have no idea. We could assume. So the Rebbe tells us like this, במצב כזה חובתנו להתבוננו לברר מה היו אומרים לשעה כזאת אבותינו, ורבותינו הקדושים נקיי הדעת מדורות קודמים. We have to go back and say what were those from previous generations that weren't confused, because they weren't confused with the confusions of today. They weren't confused. לא התבלבלו. They had very clear, they knew, they, they were not affected by the confusions of today. Let's see what, what, what some of them had to say um, from a clear perspective. Naki. Shayur gilim liftorat kol bayot hachayim akashot bekoach beirut ha'emunah. They were able to solve all the most difficult struggles and difficulties in life in the koach of clear emunah, beirut ha'emunah. Honestly, just saying those words is like a beautiful thing. Behirut ha'emuna, the clarity of emuna. That's what emuna is supposed to bring. Behirut, nechon? Clarity. Feel clear. You know, we haven't felt like clear in a few days. We felt a lot of different things. Up, down, stretched to here, pushed into there. But behirut, you know, clarity that lasts longer than 10 seconds. Behirut ha'emuna. ונקדים דברי חז"ל הידועים ממדרש רבה. So let's go, and it's a ורש גחה, this is a midrash based on our parsha. And there's a very famous midrash about Avram Avinu discovering who he was, Avram Avinu discovering the world, Avram Avinu discovering the Ribbon of Olam. And this week of Parshat Lech Lecha, when Avram Avinu is basically beginning his trail towards Eretz Yisrael, is a wonderful opportunity for us to look at all the Midrashim because the Torah Shebikhtav, Torah the Parsha, barely tells us anything. We spoke about this Shah this morning in the Menashilach here. What do we know about Avram Avinu's discovery from the Torah Shebikhtav? From, from the written Torah? K- kimat, anything. Like, or what did God see in Avram Avinu that, wanted, that, that made him want to tell him, I have, I have this thing that's called Eretz Yisrael? What, what do we know from Hashem? Barely anything. What do we know about Noach? We know one thing about Noach. Yeah, the Torah tells us that. The question is always, when it comes to Noach, <laughs> Hashem, you're, you're letting us know that you saw something so beautiful about Noach. But when it comes to Avram Avinu, it's like, ah, I'm going to pick you up. You're 75 years old. Come and start parting. What's, 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 what's going on over there? One of the beautiful uh, explanations to this is that Avram Avinu would have been so depressed if the Torah would have said such big, big, beautiful things about him. And that's how we're introduced to him. He would have been so embarrassed about it. You know, he does, it would be so counter to, to who he is. So, <clears throat> that's just the Jewish way of like, I, I don't, you know, all the hakdamas and everything. Is like, I, I really just want to, I want us to just be in the dance already and start going forward. But the Midrash fills in a lot of different pieces that help us understand, you know, what, what, what was going on in Avram Avinu's world? What was, going on, what was going on in his life? What was Avram Avinu discovering? So this Midrash is a beautiful Midrash in the beginning of Parshat Lech Lecha. And, and you know this Midrash already. The Midrash says like this, Mashal le'echad shaya over mimakom lemakom v'ra'a bira achat doleket. Parable to someone who was traveling from place to place and he saw one bira that was... Sh- Doleket, that was brighter than, than anything, shining, bright, bright, bright light, right? So what's a bira in this mashal? Does anyone know? Yeah, a palace. He saw a palace that was shining, the most majestic, beautiful, divine light coming out of it. Amar, tomar shebira zo beloman he, can you say this just happened to be? There's no one running this light show over here? It seats... Alav, now this is very, very important, the word alav, and not alav, it's a long time on this. He tzitz alav, onto him appeared Baal Habira, on him, Amarlo, Anihu Baal Habira, I'm running the light show. Kach, lefi shaya Avraham Avinu Omer, 
Avram Avinu was walking around and saying, Tomar Shaolama Zebelimani, are you going to say that this world just happens to be? And that there's no one running the show? There's no one standing by the buttons? That was Avram Avinu's Hidgalut. His revelation was bringing out to the world that it cannot be that this isn't under control. It cannot be that there's not someone, something, some entity that's running the show. And he was asking, who's running the show? Who's running the show? You know, by us, with, you know, that we, we, we want to feel like we're Bali and Muna, we feel that asking that question is a little bit kfiradik. It's like chutzpadik to even say, like, what is going on here? Who's running the show? Because we, we have to, like, we have this, it's misguided guilt where we say, I'm supposed to believe that everything's under control. Ravinu could have said the same thing about him. But you understand that when you ask and you say, I see this whole world, who is running the show? And you're sincerely asking that question, not in a, not in a kfira kind of way, not in a chutzpah kind of a way. But when you ask this question, like saying, Hashemit Baruch, our boys are, are, are ready to, to come in Mekadeh Shimcha, they're ready to come in, you know, thousands and thousands of soldiers and thousands of Yidin, millions of Yidin in the world, they're willing to, to mamish, sacrifice so much to be here. And then you say from there, and who is running this whole show? There's a Hidgalut that happens at that, at that moment. There's an Avram Avinu moment. He tzitz alav balabira. I'm you. And Hashem says, it's me. I'm Balabira. And since you asked from such a sincere place, it's on you to let the rest of the world know that I'm running the whole show. That's the diuk from the word alav, that the revelation was on to Avram Avinu. Like whenever you ask something really sincerely, like really sincerely right now, with all the pain, with all the emunah, but it's a real sincere question, right? It's a real sincere ask. Then at that moment, what happens to you is that you become a little bit of Avram Avinu. The only thing is, is that there's, there's responsibility that comes with it. That's the, that's, the whole, that's the whole deal here, is that when you really, really ask, then you have to go and you know, open up your own Chabad house, whatever, you know, the, the equivalent of that. Like, then you're like, oh, so if I'm really asking and I'm getting some kind of an answer, I then have to go and I got I to gotta share this light too. I got to share this love. This is what happened to Avram Avinu. So the story of Avram Avinu is not like he asked, he got an answer, and he's like, hmm, okay. It was more like, and Avram Avinu was you know, the open tent. That was what he was doing the rest of his life. Kach lefi shaya Avram, when the third line, second paragraph, kach lefi, God appeared unto him and said, I am the I run, I'm the owner of the world. I run the whole world. So look how the Slon Rebbe beautifully develops this. Hamashal Denan Medaber Badam this mashal is like a person that looks at the most gorgeous development in the world. A castle, a, a whole province, a whole, uh, a whole mamlacha. And he sees, wow, so much was invested and put into this. Who's, who's the owner? Like who, who owns this real estate, right? So much was put into this bira, and we're looking at the world and we're saying, Ribona Shlomam, so much was put into creating this world. So much beauty was put in, so much exact, precise thought was put into, into developing this world. There was once a chassid that said he learned emuna by taking a walk on the beach once, and he looked at every wave, and he looked how the waves meet the sand, and he just thought about the, the art that goes behind that moment. And he said, there's no human being that could ever come up, no human being in the world. It has to be, right? It has to be the Rebbe Shleilam. So much beauty was put into our world. So we have to, you know, right now, grab onto any moment of, of the beauty. And, and the more that we say, mi bala bira, there's more revelation of, I'm running the show. Ani bala bira. I'm running everything. Vine. But now, 
the palace is going up in flames. But now the palace is going up in flames and no one is bothering to put out the fire, to put out the destruction. Why? Madua. That's the question. Ribbono Shalam, you run the world, there's so much light. But there's also the other way of learning this Midrash is that that Bira is Doleket, that that fortress, that that palace that that zip code, or whatever you want to call it, is burning up in flames, and no one's putting it out. In fact, it looks like the world is just putting more and more fire, throwing more and more things to keep make that thing burn. Madua. Why? It's like putting, it's like stopping and asking ourselves, have we asked that question in the last you know, few weeks? Why would you do this to yourself, Rebona Shleiman? Madua. Why? Boom. You just joined Avram Avinu. You just became a Shutaf. And the way that Avram Avinu brings out the oneness of God in the world and the eternal message of love and real, real peace. And here the Balabira comes and tells him, Aniu Balabira. I've been waiting for someone to ask that question since things started getting Mishuga. Now, how many years did God wait for someone to ask uh, Avram Avinu's Madua? Be'erich? Yeah. 1,948 years, God was waiting for someone to ask this question. Ubekach, <clears throat> so I, my mother, I can't figure out what this Rashi Tevis is for my life. I was working on this last night, I can't figure it out. Nit yashva kolt miato. Basically, every question he ever had about how and why things happen the way they do were all settled. You know, in that question of Avram Avinu is, why is it like this? You know, we have all these questions also. Why? How could this be? Why like this? Who is running all these questions? When Hashem says the words, Ani Baal Habira, I am running the show, all questions, all the spakas, all the things we have trouble with, all the things we're dealing with, all the different things that we, all in one moment, we just like, nityashva kot miato, any question we had, hakol hityashiv. Alavai, we should taste that. It's, a, it's, a, it's, an, it's basically the moment that Hashem is waiting from each and every one of us to get to, to have enough have enough courage and strength and wisdom to understand that being a Baal Emuna is not someone that walks around that just says all the time, Gamzul Tova, Gamzul Tova, while inside they're, they're like, oh God, I hope one day I believe what I just said. The way we come to our Emuna is asking Hashem who is running the show. That's how we come to our Emuna. Not by this, you know, like I said, just... I'm supposed to be under the assumption that I believe and everything's good. And that's not how Avram Avinu did it. That's, that wasn't Avram Avinu's revelation to the world. Avram Avinu, I wouldn't even call it holy chutzpah. It's something Hashem was asking for for so many years. For, for, for any of us, a mother, a son, a daughter, a father, it doesn't matter who. Rabbeim, they have to totally ask these questions now, you know. The ones that supposedly have all the answers. They know everything. They have it all. Mi baal abira. To really ask that, who is running this show? And like you said there, when you ask that, and the answer back you hear is, Ani Baal Abira, then all the stress, anxiety, and pain, everything, everything goes, everything is mityashiv. Everything is put in its right place. Yeah, which is what we're not feeling. What's that? Mamash. Bezrat Hashem. Oh, thank you. Bechach techef umiyad. In Lubavitch, they always had a shin, because they say techef umiyad mamish. I'm another mem, right? Bechach techef umiyad. Like it's it's an instant. Thank you, Miriam. It's an it's an instant. It's like you can't understand this, but it's like this instant of like, oh, you, that's the question you asked. Feel this, and it's a it's a new world. It's a new bria now. We keep on saying, like, everything's changed. We're not the same people. The chule, the chule. 
we're, we're, we're definitely not. The only shadow is can we keep up with ourselves? The only way we can keep up with all the changes is if the questions are also changed. You know, mamash. If also that, like, pushing Hashem of this revelation of, like, mi ba'alabira, techifu mi adnamish, so it goes hand in hand. This, what the, I, what I believe the Slonimer is teaching us right now is that in Malasut, the change that we all have been experiencing was forced on us, but the shaila of how to keep up with it right now is by by Tchazek, David, Hashem, Elokav. Your personal relationship with Hashem of asking Kadosh Baruch Hu, Mi Baal Abira. Me, I'm not asking this rhetorically. I'm not asking this chutzpahly. I'm looking at the world, and the world's on fire. And I'm asking you, Hashem, mi ba'al abira. Does the tzaddikim tell us, you go and you follow Avram Avinu. You do it the way that Avram Avinu did, did it. Same thing the Midrash is telling us, it's the same thing. And on that moment that you hear back, that moment that you answer, ask that question, it's not like Hashem says, well, maybe now I'll keep you in suspense and limbo for a long time. When you really ask that question, then you come back immediately to the place of hit yashvut hadat, which is something that almost none of us have had in the last few weeks. Yeshuv Adat, settling of the mind. Rightfully so. Rightfully so. But when a chayal goes out to fight good over, over evil, the focus and the precision has to be there, nukhon. So it's amazing. A, it's a time of such craziness, but there's such a, a Yeshuv Adat that needs to take place in order to last matara, in order to then get you know get the job done get what needs to be done that's on us as well over here it's the same front mamash <clears throat> the same front god didn't explain to armavino oh let me explain to you why this is the way it's unfolding I am the mashgiach. The mashgiach. Mashgiach doesn't just mean the guy that checks the, the ovens. Ah, the lettuce, right. No, mashgiach means I'm, I'm mashgiach. I'm hashgacha. I'm overseeing the whole thing. I'm overseeing everything. So that continues. That the, he quotes over here his great his, his grandfather the base of Ramav Slanim. Kach lefi shaya of Ramavino omer tomar shalam azeh belo manig. Ramavino would say, "Is this you know the one that's the Baal Abira? Do you want anyone to continue to look at the world and say that no one's running the show? Who else said kind of similar words in the Torah? Basically, again, Ramavino is saying to God." Do you want the world to say that no one's running the show? So who else has a similar tone? Moshe. Moshe. Yeah. When, where? Egel. Moshe Rabbeinu does it another time also, but after the Chet of the Miraglim. Moshe Rabbeinu is basically saying, it can't be that your revelation, God, would lead us to a place that most of the world would come to the assumption that you had some good thoughts, but it seems like you regret them. Specifically with the chosen of Saddam Yisrael, right? Like part of part of this war is like looking up to Shemayim and saying, After Auschwitz, your people did what they did. Do you want the world to think that that was a nice gesture you did for broken people, like the, the way the UN treated the res- you know the whole Indian? Really, the met that's really. But not in a, it's like, I know I sound chutzpahdik, but it's not in a chutzpahdik way. It's like a real, I don't know, it's what I'm, it's what I'm feeling. It's like just a real, natural, healthy, you know, because, tzaka to live. Because that's one of the last year, is that if you have that relationship with Hashem, then you can question, you can yell at him, because you have that closeness, that relationship. But, right, I just want to stress, though, but not, not in a chutzpah kind of way. Right. Like, but it's saying, you're, you're comfortable enough, you're open enough, yeah. you have that kesher, right. that you can question and say how you feel and not feel that you're going to get slapped. 
Like shot with a, you know, like a lightning strike you. Moshe Rabbeinu opened up that gate. You know, Rabbeinu opened up that gate. Moshe Rabbeinu opened up that gate for us to be able to say, God, do you, do, do you want, does this look like, <clears throat> you know, the birad oleged, what's, what's, maze, maze, yech But I think, like, another element, because that's very important, the open communication, but I think it's also, like, mashal, like, the people talk to Israel, now, how they can be Mm. You know, so I'm just going back to what you're saying is that maybe, like, maybe that's the tzakav lev is Hashem. You see that with all the hasbara that we if we could try to do, it, it hasn't changed one person's mind. That means it's only you, only your hidgalut can really do this, the shining of the light. It won't change. I don't know one person in the world that actually changed their mind because of hasbara. Maybe a, a newspaper changed the headline maybe. out of fear of being sued, maybe, but not, not anyone's heart. I don't know if anyone's heart is, you know, really, so, oh, wow, this is Hashem's people, you know. Yeah. Lo Only you could. Coming from there is like, I don't know, that's the most beautiful Kiddush Hashem that could be. One of the most beautiful Kiddush Hashem that could be. Like my grandfather said, he says, Someone that just looks at the way the world is being run will be str- will be grabbed by how do you say that will be grabbed by like, like I think it comes from the word even like miflatzet like monstrous you'll be like what in the world is going on here bir oto kihine ele reshaim veshalve olam hisigu chayu. That, that, that the Rishayim and the ones that are r- destroying any serenity of the world seem to be victorious. And you look at the streets of London and you look at the streets of New York and you look at the streets of Sydney and you look at the streets of almost anywhere ac- across the world and you say, Hashem, forget the fact that that makes me sick to my core, but but Matt? Is that really, is this really the world where, that you created? Mi ba'al abira. Mi ba'al abira. Not asking those questions and trying to fight the PR war, you're doomed for losing instantly. Not only losing, you're doomed for causing even more destruction. And honestly, <clears throat> it's koach that, like we said last week in Shir, we have to do things that give us more strength, that doesn't give you more strength. It takes away more strength. But if while you're doing what you're doing, you're saying, mi ba'al abira, mi ba'al abira, who is running the show? Who is running the show? Then there's a moment of hitzitz alav ba'al abira, meaning Hashem is saying, I'm the, I'm the manig, and I'm revealing this to you, and now you're going out and doing, this is a different, this is a different avoda now. And we act differently. And we're still not there as a country. Bichlal. I'm not even talking... Bichlal, bichlal. But the individuals can do this. You know, on an individual level, we can do this. We have to. Anyone that asks the questions like this. Ve'ilu ha'olchim betorat Hashem nimtzayim b'shefel ha'madrega. And while these people seem to be have causing such victory in the world, the ones that are, you know, walking in the path of Hashem seem to be so low. God turns down to him and says, I run the world. No one asked me until you. No one asked me until you. And every one of us has to feel that. Like when we ask that question from the deepest depths of our life, you will hear, part of the answer will be, no one asked me this question like the way that you're asking me this question. You think any of us are, have a ptor, have an exemption of asking Hashem me Balabira right now? Not one person. There's no ptor. There's no exemption of anyone sitting in this room. There's no exemption from anyone in the am to find the words, to ask the word, to ask the question. Mi ba'al habira, because the answer will be. I, I believe in this b'mun shlema. 
The answer will be, no one asked me the question the way that you're asking the question. Which means that there's going to be a new Hidgalut, a, a revelation of godliness that never existed before, perhaps due to one of our questions. To one of us asking that question in the way that we ask it. Right? Chazek David Ba'ashem Elokav, your own God, your own understanding, yes. Why, the war is over? No, but we're but, standing over our men. But, the, but it's over? No. Like the shiva's over? No, but the conflict. So, what's the, so what, not only what's the conflict, what's the ptor? Yeah. Afuch. You're talking about Nechama, you're talking about some sort of a revelation from Hashem. Two different things. I'm just saying it puzzles me too. Because, it sounds nice, and I'm just in a huge piece here. Because it's a, because it demands. I, I think I understand what you're saying. Because it demands. Basically, what Mindy is alluding to is that Misha Meitomu Talifanav, which is puts you puts you in the category of Onen. Like when when before someone gets buried, so there's the whole category of where you're pitur from anything, because you can't really do anything, right? So part of the part of our story is like we're in there, right? We're in that situation, and then so you're saying from that point of view. How can how could it be the time or the how could we have the koach to ask like this, right? How does what would you tell a chayal on the front lines that asks you that question in terms of his strength right now to go out and fight? Maybe it's not time now. Maybe we first finish mourning. Ends man, sister. <laughs> Ends man. We don't have time. We don't have time to figure out how the. <laughs> There's no time. <laughs> There's no time. He doesn't have time to listen to a shir. <laughs> he doesn't have time. He doesn't have time. This is all you're talking in the confines of time and Yeshua Adat. The Yeshua Adat, what he said, only comes from asking the question. That's what he said. And of pain over the world. Betach. Right. And then, when Hashem, he asked, so if you don't have the piece of ever staying alone in a beautiful place, the answer from Hashem of, it's me, is it necessarily going to be helpful? And if you don't have both pieces, nachon, nachon. Mm-hmm. And I think that we have, we have enough beauty in our, in our, in our arsenal of, of, of the way that, where the questions are coming from. Have you tasted more beauty in Amis for the last two weeks than in your whole life? So you have that. You do have that. You, I think you have both. And, and it's true, you have to have both with the question. The question isn't, how could you do such... No one can, the answers never come to those. Those aren't questions that ever get answered. They just, that, those are questions that take away more koach. They, 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 they take away koach from you. And we keep on speaking about thoughts. This was in the Menshi, I remember. We were speaking about the avoda of having thoughts that give space to have more thoughts instead of thoughts that clog up our minds mm-hmm. and taking action and things that give you more strength as opposed to taking away more strength. And it's a battle on both fronts and they're happening all the time. So the way that we, we, we look up to... Part of me just wants to crumble under the, under the, under the, uh, uh, under the blanket and, and, and say, Right? It's okay to think that once a day, you know? <laughs> but that's not the real, that's not the, you know, that's not the real question that's going to give you more strength. And it's not the question that your neshama really wants to ask either. The soul is dying to ask Avram Avinu's question. It's, trying, it's dying to find the words to ask like Avram Avinu. Because the soul knows that the Yishuv Adat will come when I figure out how to ask, her, how to ask that question. It does. Second, end of the second line. See, we don't want to understand why and how. We just want to know that everything's under control. Right? 
וכך הוא עכשיו רצון העליון שהבירה תדלק באש. And for some reason, there was a רצון right now that this should happen. None of us understand it. It's not saying good or bad. It is what it is. It happened already. ובזאת נתיישב לו הכל. And just by hearing from Hashem, saying I'm running the whole show, everything was solved for him. Not, not solved, settled. He, that's the word he keeps on using. He doesn't say patul. Like, like patata, ta, baya. He uses the word hitiashba etzlo. Now also, you should just know that settling of the mind doesn't mean, oh, now I don't have to daven. Because it's all under hashgacha. Hafuch. This type of hitiashvut adat that you receive from asking such questions gives you an added element of passion and of love like you never experienced before, driving you to daven even stronger, driving you to do even more for Klal Yisrael. It's not the type of things that's like a sedative. Oh, itiashvut adat. I feel ashgacha. Hashem runs the show. I can now go under my blanket. I'm not scared. Mafuch. It, it, it gives you even more strength to keep on doing whatever you're doing until now and even taking on more initiatives. ובזאת נתיישב לו הכל, אף על פי שעדיין לא הבין ולא ידע מפני מהכל זה מתרחש. סלון רבי סיינג, אף מבין הוא דינט סטיל, הוא דינט אנדרסטנד נאו הוא אבריטינג וורקס, הוא דינט רוויל טיימי איז וייז, הוא דינט טל אם זה היה להפן בגלל זה, זה היה להפן בגלל זה, הוא דינט אמר לו, אני מרגיש את זה, אני מרגיש את זה, זה היה כל השם אמר לו. עצם ההכרה שיש השגחה פרטית על הכל, מהווה הסבר, <coughs> מניח את הדת לכל התופעות התמוהות. Just the recognition that there is השגחה פרטית over everything, somehow gives us the ability to be exposed to what we're being exposed to and to operate from a different place. וכמו שאמר פעם מרן היסוד העבודה, סרוסי יגן עלינו, לאחד מאנשיו, that's one of the first rabbis in סלונים, כאל אדון על כל המעשים. זה תירוץ לכל הקושיות. This is the answer to all the קשיות we have in life. הרבה קושיות והרבה דברים מעיקים על לב האדם. So many קשיות and so many painful things are, are burdening the heart of every single person. But then on Shabbos morning we say, והידיעה כי קייל אדון על כל המעשים. It's not just a nice nigun. What does קייל אדון על כל המעשים mean? There is a God who is a master over all actions, over everything. מיישבת ומרככת הכל. That statement puts everything into its picture, puts everything in line, settles everything. It doesn't remove the pain, but it removes one thing. What does it remove? What does Kei Ladon O'Kol Masim remove? Fear. Anti-Bitachon. Whatever that is. The anti-Bitachon. Kei Ladon O'Kol Masim. Now, all that's true, always and in general. We could be in 19... We could be 1820, and we could be sitting in... Uh, I don't know. Name a random place in the world. Think of Risk, and like, think of one of the, uh, Irkutsk. Remember? It was Irkutsk and Yakutsk. There was these two countries, right? And the Risk, and the game of Risk. Be sitting there, and you could say these words, and it's all true. There's no, there's no difference between this statement of faith and belief to any time or place. But we are here, and we are now, living in the time that we're in. So look what he says. והדברים האלה כוחם יפה שבעתיים ביחס לארצנו הקדושה. Everything we just said right now is so much more beautiful and accurate when it comes to ארץ ישראל. ארץ ישראל מאז ומעולם לא היו בה חיים רגילים. It was never normal here. There was never a time of things being normal here. Ever. We, we, we would like to think, oh, three weeks ago it was normal. Really? It was normal? באמת? מה היה נורמל? The illusion maybe was, 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 was uh, brighter, but you know, we're all waking up from our coma and realizing that everything has to change regarding our relationship with the enemies that surround us. Maybe the illusion was a bit thicker, but 
nothing was normal here. Nothing was normal here. It was always like this, the Islam and Rebbe saying. It was never normal here. This is not a normal place. There were times in America you could say America was pretty normal. Maybe even boring. 1980s. It was boring. It was normal. Normal. Especially for, for hippies, it was like death sentence, you know, the 80s in America. I don't know why I'm looking at you. It's, it's a bunch of people. <laughs> a bunch of people, right? Boring, normal. But it was never like that here. There was never a, there was never such an inyan of chayim regilim. It was normal here. It was never. Mini durot rabim pakdurot atzarot arben. You think it's just from 1948, the tzarot? <laughs> it, it's always, the only time when we spoke about this, you know, Zman HaShlomo HaMelech, I don't even know if you can call that normal, but maybe since then, like to say that there was anything normal going on here, it never was. <clears throat> Third line, Umesora hi beyadeinu mitkufat maran bal yesoda avoda. Again, Yesoda Avoda is the name of the Sefer of one of the first rabbis of Slonim. Which means more than 170 years ago. Right? You know what a Magefa is? Did you say that in English? A, uh, an epidemic. An epidemic. These deadly epidemics would just erupt here all the time, right? Right? <coughs> This is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. While a certain epidemic was, was outbursting in Eretz Yisrael, they heard the following drasha from the Yesoda Avoda. Look what he says. I actually saw This is Amichai's Meretz of Pasha. It's a big thing in Pasha Shmini. It should be B'Sha'at Tavah Mutzlachat. Pasha Shmini, Rosen Bar Mitzvah. So it says like this, we find in the Torah two times the word darash comes, comes, comes to play. Now whenever a, a, a word, this is a klal, whenever a word is, is rare, and it only shows up a number of times, you see the Rishonim, the Orachayim, the Kliyaka, they're always, the Ibn Ezra, they're always saying, oh, so there must be a Kesha between the two, if it shows up so random, so, so, so rarely, right? So the word darosh. So the first time, it says like this, Echad ve'et se'ir ha'chatat darosh darash Moshe ve'ine soraf. Very interesting pasuk over there. When it comes to the se'ir ha'chatat, there was a shayla what to do with it, and it was fully consumed. It was, and then ve'ine soraf, and it was fully burnt. It's a whole shayla there about a certain korban, what to do with it. That's the first time. Bet, eretz asher Hashem elokecha doresh ota. Where do we have that? It's the end of the Torah. It says that the Torah, that Eretz Yisrael is a land that Hashem is always Doresh. What does Doresh mean? Seeking, like, Doresh Ota is demanding it to be in front of him. Eretz Asher, Eine Hashem Elokecha Talatamid. His eyes are always on it. What's the connection between the two times this word Darosh, Dorash? Listen to this, this is crazy. Lir Moz. Ki Eretz Yisrael tamid hi shruya b'matzav shel ve'ines soraf. Eretz Yisrael seems to always be in this reality until Mashiach comes of it's burning up. It's going to be done. It's going to be over. You know, that feeling of Eretz Yisrael may be done, you think we felt it strongly two weeks ago? In 1973, in 1967, those were real, real, real thoughts that people said this enterprise was a, an attempt, but it doesn't seem that that's really, it's, it's like they, people really felt, you know, and Hashem is Baruch, please don't ever put that fear in us ever again. That that chas v'sham, this is, this nisayon to Mekadesh, your name through all the, all the trials and tribulations we're in is just temporary. But he says that it's always in this state Eretz Yisrael, the connection between the two psukim is that Eretz Yisrael is always in the state of vehines soraf. It's like it's burning up. People feel that. It's like we have, and we all felt this. Maybe we still do feel this. That, that like, it's all going up in flames. Chas v'shalom. Ki'ilu en z'chut kiyum v'emshech la'eretz azot. Seemingly, like, portraying this image of but the land itself, the way it's in, has no schut kiyum, the way it is. Aval dafka, 
בשעה כזאת מתחבר לכל שהיא ארץ אשר השם אלוקיך דורש אותה. Yeah, you could die in the first pasuk, but he never saw laugh. It's all going up. Remember the next pasuk. This is what Hashem has his eyes on all the time. This is what Hashem is demanding more than anything else, to be in the world. Eretz Yisrael. You see what we did? We messed with Eretz Yisrael and gave to enemies, to evil people, a shtickle of what Hashem is looking at. Don't ignore that piece of this whole balagan, this whole meshugas. You cannot ignore that, piece, that, 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 that part of it. Hashem is looking at Eretz Yisrael tamid. Oh, he's doresh ota. He's demanding it all the time. He's demanding its light to be shining throughout the whole world. V'chi tamid eine Hashem elokecha ba le'amid revach v'atzala le'yudim. What does it mean that God is demanding? He's always demanding a new way to show that I'm Baal Abira through Eretz Yisrael. That question of Avram Avinu, Mi Baal Abira. When did Avram Avinu ask that question? Where did he ask that question? In Eretz Yisrael or not? No. And look what kind of a hitgalut he brought to the world by asking that question in Chutz Laretz. So can you imagine how much infinitely deeper and more powerful it could be for someone within the place that Hashem is doresh ota, to ask me Baal Habira here, here, to ask that here. Uh, I want to just explain this a little, bit, a little bit deeper for a second. Eretz Asher Hashem Elkecha doresh ota means God is always demanding, seeking out a way for Ani Baal Habira to be known in Eretz Yisrael more than any other place in the world. And so that means he's, that, that, that now the time to seek out mi ba'al abira here, where we are now, is answering Hashem's plea of Eretz Hashem. Tamid any Hashem elokecha ba doresh ota tamid. And that's why the Slanim is saying, that's why here it's never been normal, because somehow the way the human mind is designed is that the question of mi ba'al abira usually comes when what? When you're shoved to the corner, when you're pushed. It's like we have all these pushings and there's been so many shaylas of Miba al-Abira all these years till finally one, one person will say it in a way that will put an end to all, the, all the, the reasons that push us to the corner to ask Miba al-Abira. Tamid, the third line from the bottom, Tamid, b'chol mashber u'matzav kasheh, mitgalet shuv le'im kol ha'ashgacha al-yona ha'prusa al-Eretz Yisrael. V'chi l'amrot she'ayan nir'eh she'abira doleket and even though so often we are sure we're on the brink of the absolute other side, the dark, the, the end, you ever look back at history and say, you know how many times people felt that this was over? Mamash. How many times did people here think that this enterprise was cute, but it's not lasting? It's done. And then someone comes out with a Mi Baal Abira question, igniting the Jewish pride again, and again things are restored, the only danger is, is that chas v'shalom, that we go back to anything remotely close to what was, as a consciousness of a people. God forbid, Hashem yirachem aleinu. That would be an asun. It would be an asun. If any of us go back to lekad muto, as much as we just want it to be like, I just want to be with my friends, with kolzeh, that's for chutz l'artz. And Eretz Yisrael doesn't work like that. It's not, that's not our game. It's not what we signed up for by living here, by moving here. That's not it. <laughs> so, we'll do this also, until, the, until this next paragraph. One time during World War II, the Slonim Rebbe Nitevo Shalom says, Nish'alti al-edei echad ha-meurei hitev ba-anagat ha-tzibur. Someone that was involved with communal uh, leadership asked me, Machu Shevani What do I think about what's going on right now? And I said to him, What am I, what am I worried about? I have my Rebbe's words from 120 years ago. Their chiuniyut, chiuniyut means essential. 
דברים חיוניים. The Slam Rebbe is saying, his words, the, 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 the shaykhus, the, the, the essentiality of his words are, are still the same as they were 120 years ago, and we're sitting here saying the same thing 170 years after. הלא כל אותם מאה ועשרים השנים שחלפו מאז, היוו שרשרת רצופה של מראות קשים בארץ ישראל. For 120 years, from the time that he said this, right? There's just been a chain of difficulties here in Eretz Yisrael. שבכל פעם דמינו בבירור כי הנה שורף ממש. And every time we thought about the first פסוק. והנה שורף ממש, that it's really all burning up. ותמיד ברגע הקריטי ביותר נתגלה כי זו ארץ אשר השם אלוקיך דורש אותה. And at the most critical moment, we, it was always revealed that this is the land that God is demanding. This is the land that God has his eyes on. This is the land that God is demanding from us to call out for its kavod, for its light. ולמדנו עוד מתורתו של היסוד העבודה, סחוס יוגן עלינו, כללים גדולים בעניין הנהגת ארץ ישראל. Now this really should be its own, this next set, eight, nine lines should be its own sheer. But I feel it's very important to pack it into right now, and we're going to continue this on Thursday. Many people, the fear, and this came from Chutz Laaretz, a horrible comment someone wrote me. He said, when are you, when are you, this is a, this is a, a chassid said to me, basically, don't you see that the day after we gave him the kvittel for the new year, this happened, right? Which comes to show you that you all have it, ki'ilu, you all have it wrong. Macho kaze, like, uh, not, not exactly those words. Right? Because 10 days before we were, we were, this, this, this asan happened, we were saying, Berosh Hashanah, you know, we were saying those words, right? So that means that Ki'ilu, the Zera was, and now this is what happened, and now this is what it's coming to tell us. So there's this Indian of a Chutzlar's kind of mind that says that within the confines of time, time has showed you that. You, you're all messed up and you got to break it all down and start again. Because that's what the Maaseh is coming to show you. But this piece is unbelievable regarding Hanhagat Eretz Yisrael, the way that things work in Eretz Yisrael. Look what he says. Sheyesh shnei ofanim behanaga There are two manners in sup, supernal Hanhaga, like Hashgacha, the way things work. Yesh anuga mesuderet אשר נקבעת בראש השנה לכל ימות השנה, ואי אפשר לשנותה. It's true. On Rosh Hashanah something is decreed, and that's what it's going to be no matter what. And that's true. ויש עוד הנהגה מיוחדת, but there's another way of, of how things work here. אשר הקדוש ברוך הוא בכבודו ובעצמו מנהיג אותה, ולא מסרה לאף שר ומלאך זולתו. There's something that God never revealed to any ministering angel. שאפילו אחרי שכבר נקבע בראש השנה מה שנקבע, yes, ראש השנה came, what was said was said, what was written was written, <coughs> יכולים להמשיך בה ישועה ורחמים מעל לטבע. That you can still draw down salvation and רחמנס above and beyond nature. So let's look at our, our situation. What was written on ראש השנה? What was the creed on ראש השנה? What was the creed on Rosh Hashanah is what we experienced. Correct. What else works in the world of Hashem running the show? A total different Hanaga that's not Kederach HaTeva, not Kederach, the way that our timeline works. And we all know this. We all believe that. Ki kuchabrichu rachamav bli gvul. God's mercy knows no end. Vehu le'elem mikol mseder umishtar Hanaga. You can't, when a Jewish heart asks me, Baal Abira, you think the answer would ever be, well, make sure you ask me right before next year, Rosh Hashanah, because this year it's already... Do you think that could be? What was your answer to the second thing that... The second, you, you said, what was the second thing that happened? What was... I missed... To the answer to the person that wrote me then? No, to what? To the pe- to his piece. No, I'm saying the first thing is Nachon. On the level of the Hanhagah that on Rosh Hashanah things are written, that's true. That, that is what happened because we see it in front of our eyes. Emunah is, that was the creed on Rosh Hashanah. How? Why? I don't know. 
And you, I'll never know. And even when Mashiach comes, I won't. Care. I don't even want to know. It won't matter to me. The answer, the second thing, though, is that even when things are written and inscribed, and that had to be, that doesn't mean that that needs to continue to be. Any decree. Umichevan shemanhig hu et eretz Yisrael hu atzmo. We're almost done. And since a shamid barach is is he is running Eretz Yisrael, it's this personal. My eyes are on it. It's more personal than any other hanaga in the world. Mimela nitan ba leshanot agzera berachim uvetachanunim. Then it has to be for sure that through rachamim and tachanunim and avinu malkenos and chesed and mi ba labira questions, all decrees could be nullified. Let's say like this. Let's let's get very real. Could there be that there's still a very heavy decree on Am Yisrael right now that was written on Rosh Hashanah? Could that be? I know you don't want to say it, but it could be, right? Does that matter based on the Hanagah of Eretz Yisrael? No. No. Velo od. He says like this. It's not just that this works, this way of bringing down mercy, overriding an initial decree of Rosh Hashanah, doesn't only happen in Eretz Yisrael. Velo od el agam b'nei chutz l'aretz. You could draw down a salvation unto yourself wherever you are in the world. You could draw down a supernatural salvation unto yourself in, against the accordance of how things work in the nature. That was the creed on Rosh Hashanah. Only one, there's only one thing. Slum Rebbe is not holding a Bnei Akiva flags, you understand? He's not, he's not singing a tikva at the end of every tish. He's talking about Gedusha Sa'aretz. He's saying the a way for any Jew in the world to connect to salvation that goes beyond the way that things normally work is only through Kedushat, connecting yourself to Kedushat Eretz Yisrael. Kimamara Katuv, like the Pasuk says, V'it palelu elecha derech artsam. That they pray to you through their land, through the merit of Eretz Yisrael. If anyone wants to understand that better, look at the Hakdama of the Ema Banim Smecha. In the Hakdama of the Ema Banim Smecha, he says like this: We say, we, and we said this a lot during, uh, you know, Yimim Noraim. We say, "Vakimoti et briti mitcham, vaafit briti Avraham et eskor, vaafit briti Yitzchak eskor, vaafit briti Yaakov eskor." Meaning, even if all the merits of all of our avot don't open the gates for us at a certain moment, the bottom line is that when Eretz Yisrael is where you're operating from, that's what it, that Rachmanus that it brings out to the world, that's the bottom line of it. Because that's what Hashem is looking at all the time. Now, listen, there's a lot more for us to... And this is only a third of this letter that went out. We're going to continue this on Thursday. There's a lot in here. There's a, Baruch Hashem, there's a lot in here. But if I ever asked you for homework, and like, pleading for homework, like mamash, is to figure out how you're going to ask the question while you, again, look at the world this week. And don't forget for a second what happened two weeks ago. To figure out your most sincere sincere plea of me ba'alabira. Not just for your sake, it'll be amazing for you personally, but b'shem kol Yisrael, to have to figure out your own way of asking that question, who is running this whole show? And if it's emanating from anger, I'm already telling you right now, that's the wrong way. Now, it can't emanate from total peace and quiet and love either, because we're, we're a bundle of emotions as well. But to come from a place of really, really <clears throat> openness, openness, an open place, a new place, something that never existed before in you, and to ask that, and Be'ezer Hashem, all of us will, in that schut of that one question being asked, all of our tmihot were, Li'it Yashev, Teichef, Umiyad, Mamash, Be'ezer Hashem. All right, it should be good news this week.